Welcome to the broadcast of Exceedingly Abundant Ministries in cooperation with Bethel Worship Center of Joplin, Missouri. Their goal is to win the lost, disciple Christians, set the captives free, and see the sick made whole. Bethel Worship Center is located at 3125 West 20th Street in Joplin. Weekly service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and a Wednesday evening Bible study at 6.30 p.m. For more information, visit their website at BethelJoplin.org. Now, here is Pastor Gary Culp with today's message. Well, good afternoon. The Lord bless you. What do we know for sure? God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Let's pray for souls. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Father, we love every person. We want everyone to go to heaven. So we're uniting our faith together, crying out for the eternal salvation of every boy and girl, man and woman in Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, their past, present, future spouses, all the children they have now in the future and their family members, all grandchildren they have now in the future and their family members, all great-grandchildren they have now in the future and their family members. By faith, Father, we're sending the Holy Spirit to convict every person of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Lord Jesus Christ, reveal yourself to each person, your incarnation, your perfect life, the great miracles you did, your death, burial, and resurrection, your precious atoning blood, the revelation and understanding that by your stripes we were healed would come to every boy and girl, man and woman. They would humble themselves before you, repent of their sins, receive you, Lord Jesus, as Savior and Lord, being gloriously born again from above. And Father, please get every person to a good Bible-believing teaching church. They would then be baptized in water, receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Every Christian would become a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're praying for every demon-possessed, demonized, and captive person to be set free, and all the sick to be healed from every sickness, every disease, and your people to receive and walk in financial abundance, prosperity, debt cancellation of their debts, the full blessing of Abraham, whom God blessed in all things. And we agree for that in Jesus' name. But also, Father, we love the Jewish so much, people so much. We're crying out for their salvation. Father, let the blinders and scales be removed from their hearts and minds. And they, may they see, Lord Jesus, you are their Messiah, and you're their Savior and Lord, and they would be born again. We pray, Father, for the peace of Jerusalem according to your word, and we agree with your word. They have eternal covenant to all the land of Canaan. Father, restore all the land to them and protect them, Lord, and give them total victory as your word declares in the Psalm 83 war and the Ezekiel 38, 39 war, wars, which have yet to happen. So, Father, give them victory, and may all Christians support them, and especially the United States of America also. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. But also, Father God, there's so many wicked, evil things going on. Lord, we need your help. Father, we're agreeing together in prayer. We're declaring, Father, we ask you to destroy all the plans of Joe Biden and the Fed to bring back that uh, digital currency, the Fed now. Father, this is nothing but something to bring bondage to your people, to bring forth the mark of the beast, to control our finances. We pray that the dollar would remain strong. We pray, Father God, that you'll raise up millions of people to cry out against it, and there will be no digital currency, Father God, in the United States of America until after the rapture of the church, Father God. Destroy this wickedness, and we agree for it in Jesus' name. Also, Father God, don't let there be any more viruses or pestilences created in those labs. And if those labs try to do it, Father, burn them down, destroy them, Father God. Don't let them do evil to America again or any other nation in Jesus' name. Also, Father, please secure our borders. Father, there's foreign soldiers, there's pedophiles, there's sex traffickers, there's drug criminals or people being let out of prison brought to America to bring destruction and ruin to our country. Father, drive them out, whether it be through your angelic host or law enforcement, and allow those only to come back in who come forth in accordance with your will and purposes and according to our laws and constitution. We thank you for it now. Also, Father, please protect our power grid. Don't let there be any EMPs released. Father God, don't let them contaminate, contaminate our water or our food, Father God. Don't let anybody put any mRNA material into our food, water, plants, or animals to bring again sickness and disease. But also, Father, protect our electricity, our gas, our oil, our coal. Father, don't let them destroy uh, any power grids. And Lord, we agree, Father, that we're going to be energy independent 
repented again. And we thank you, Father, for fossil fuels. They're a blessing. And, Father, you gave it to America to be blessed. Restore those and those who are trying to ruin these provisions of the Lord. Father, remove them from their place of office and replace them with godly, born-again, spirit-filled men and women. And also, Father God, we are just seeing in America that there is no justice. So, Father, we're crying out to you, Father God, to you would bring divine justice and judgment against the Joe Biden administration and everyone involved in his administration, Father God. Bring forth truth, reveal every work of darkness being done, whether it be in secret, and bring it to the light. And again, Lord Jesus, you deal with those according to your word and let everyone in America begin to experience the fear of God as you reveal these things and expose them and bring forth your justice. Us, and we thank you for it now in Jesus name all right we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare I do want to bring you one little update uh, I'd like to give you a little updates about you know the vaccination the virus you know it's all from the pit of hell of course but the latest thing from the Geller report and the writer was Patrick Webb uh, it just came out and now notice this 80 86 percent of the children who took the Pfizer vaccine in clinical trials, you know, checking things out, had an adverse reaction. Did that stop them from putting it out? 86%. Isn't that sad? See, again, the virus and the vaccination, just like Dr. Peter McCullough and Dr. Richard Fleming has said, is a bioterrorism weapon. So you don't want to go there. And if you've done it, repent, pray for God, and, and receive a miracle of being delivered from all that was, that was put into your system. God can do that, and he is doing that. So praise God for that. Okay, we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare today. If you're a born-again believer, you have an enemy, the devil. Was he defeated on the cross? True. Is he dead? No. Is the battle real? Yes, according to the Word of God. Now, again, once you're saved, well, I'm in Christ. Satan can't touch me, right? No, absolutely not true. Absolutely not true, and we'll prove that with the Word of God, and we'll uh, let you know so you can understand how can I know is the devil messing with me. Well, usually that's pretty easy, but let's just put some definitive understanding with it. First of all, let's go to Matthew chapter 8, beginning verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying in sick of a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. That's awesome, isn't it? In other words, a fever was unacceptable to Jesus, so he took care of it. And she arose and ministered unto him. When the evening was come, they brought him to him many that were possessed with demons. He cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Again, deliverance and healing, Jesus' ministry. Now, why did he do it? Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, that's Isaiah 53, 4, saying, He Himself, that's our Savior Jesus Christ, <clears throat> took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. But let's go back to the word possessed with demons. You know, your average Christian reads that word and thinks, well, I don't have to worry about that. I've got Jesus, so I can't be possessed with demons. And you're right. You can't be demon possessed. But you need to understand the word possessed here. And if you have a Bible, it may have a side note, is the Greek word daimoninzomai. Yes, it means can mean possessed, but it also mean, it means and has the understanding to be demonized to be under the influence or attack of a demon. I can tell you 100% that happens to Christians. That happens to you. Okay? The devil plots and plans against Christians. And if you're trying to do anything for Jesus at all, you realize you received spiritual interference from the devil. So we understand that the demonic realm is real. It's going on today. Demons are persons without bodies. They have a passion to be inside of a body. Satan has two main objectives when it comes to you. Yes, you. Number one, his first objective is to keep you from being saved. 
Satan wants you to go to hell. He wants to destroy God's creation. He doesn't want you to be born again. He doesn't care if you're religious. He, he, he loves religion. But he doesn't want you to become a born-again believer and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But if he fails there, he's not done. You're saved. You lost, devil. Ha, ha, ha. But now his assignment is to keep you from serving Christ effectively. And if you're an honest Christian, you realize as you live for Jesus and do things, there just seems things that seem to happen behind the scenes that seem to try to hinder you. Well, that's the devil. Now, we need to distinguish, first of all, between the flesh and demons. We all have an old Adamic nature, okay? That's the carcass. We are, too, as a Romans 6, 11 through 13, basic Christianity once we get saved, realize that Jesus defeated Satan on the cross. When he died, we died. When he rose again, we rose again. And we are to reckon that in daily experience. Romans, oh, let me go ahead and read that. Romans 6, uh, verse 11 through 13, the Christian life. Likewise, reckon, count on, rely on, another good words. You also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. <laughs> yeah, it does matter how you live. That you should obey it in its lust. Neither yield your members, that's parts of your body, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So basic Christianity, one and one, once you get saved, you realize you're still getting tempted. The devil's still trying to mess with you, and you're to reckon yourself dead to sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. But now the, the agent that is coming against you is the devil and his kingdom. And make it, let's make it specific, the demons. The demons are the vultures that settle on the carcass of your flesh if you give in to them. Now we realize from the word of God, Jesus tells us, God tells us, that there's two different things we need to do concerning the attacks of devil when he comes against us. Number one, the word is resist. James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. Do that day by day, moment by moment. When the devil comes against you, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay. So if you're a born again believer who hears God's words and obeys him, you submit to God on a daily basis. But also when the devil shows up, you resist him. And the good news is he flees. Also, Peter tells us the devil's trying to mess with us. <laughs> the, the apostles understood that. And if you read the book of Acts, you see how that works out. First Peter 5, 8, Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, he's talking to born again believers, like a roaring lion, okay, Satan is noisy, he is loud, I guarantee you, he's loud, okay walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Well, let's think about it. He's already got the unsaved people. So who is this he trying to devour? Christians. He's trying to devour you and I. God said so. Oh, I know it's true. Every Christian I really know understands it's true, but do you know it's true? So what do you do about it? You recognize that's him? Whom resists steadfast in the faith. Ah, in the faith, that means you're saved. That means he's messing with Christians. He's trying to devour Christians. He's trying to take you out. Yeah, that's right. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing again that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren, ever legitimate Christian, that are in the world. So, <laughs> does the devil mess with all Christians? Yes. Hopefully that even makes you feel better. But if he's just messing with you from the outside, you resist him. Well, what happ happens when he gets a place or stronghold in me? Well, then he has to be expelled. His legal right has to be taken away through repentance 
confessing that sin that opened the door for the devil to have a place in your life, and he has to be cast out. Notice the great commission that Jesus gave that Mark records, Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow those who believe. That means born-again Christians, people who are really saved. Okay. What signs follow us who will get saved? In my name, Jesus says, I've given you authority to use my name. He gave it to the 12. He gave it to the 70. He's given it to you and I. In my name, that's the first thing you'll do. They shall cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues, languages, as a result of receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. They shall take up serpents, any attack in the natural, the supernatural against you. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So Jesus says there are people that the devil has somehow got a legal right and a stronghold of bondage in their life, and it just doesn't need to be resisted. No, it's got to be cast out. In fact, you notice the early uh, disciples of the 70, remember in Luke 10, Jesus sent them out, and, and, and they, were, they were to prepare the way for Jesus. Notice when they came back and gave a report to Jesus in Luke 10, 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us, the believer. How? Through thy name, just like Jesus said. And he said unto them, Jesus, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That means Satan is the entire kingdom. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, and they are, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And oh, that's a wonderful thing to know your names are written in heaven. So we understand the devil attacks Christians, all Christians. We all have to learn how to put on the whole armor of God and resist the devil when he shows up. And then we'll come across people, and sometimes we have given a legal right to Satan. He has a place in us, and he literally has to be cast out. He has a place. Again, let's back it up with Scripture. Probably the best Scripture that makes most sense to most people and they can't argue against is found in Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Be you angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Okay, that's instruction from God's Word. Okay, what happens if you go to bed mad? You give in to that angry. You get into your flesh. Oh, here you go. And you don't take care of it? Verse 27, here's what God says happens. Neither give place, the Greek word topos, a beachhead, an open door to the devil. By sinning and not taking care of the sin... Satan now has a legal right to attack you more, influence you more, and you literally give him a place or a base of operation in your life. That's how serious it is to repent of your sins and confess your sins. The devil can get a hold of you. You gave him the open door. You played on his playground. And you didn't get that under the blood of Jesus. You didn't take care of it. And now you've got a problem. Okay. So what are the characteristic activities of demons? Okay. And some are pretty obvious, but let's look at them anyway. Entice. Okay. The devil tempts you to do evil. Often, most of the time, it is in a verbal form. Words in your mind. You know, the devil talks to you, too. Remember, Jesus said in John 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Yes, Jesus talks to us, but the devil talks to us, too. He tempts us. Okay. Remember, Jesus, before he stepped into his ministry, the devil came to him and and began to tempt Jesus because, remember, who's the tempter? God. Nope. The tempter is the devil. Matthew 4. We'll read verse 3. 
And when the tempter came to him, Jesus, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus came back with the word of God when the devil tempted him. Okay, that's the right way. Get thee hence, Satan, it is written. That works when you're tempted. Another aspect to understand concerning temptation is found in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 13. And this is a great understanding to have. James 1, 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. So God never solicits you to do evil. Okay. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Okay, so what's the problem? But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Oh, what does that mean? That means because of that old Adamic nature. There's in every one of us perverted, perverted desires and lust, and Satan appeals to that fallen nature. He attempts you because of those lusts that are within you to act independent of God and to sin. Okay. Is drawn away of his lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it bring, finished bringeth forth death. So, we are tempted. We have a fallen nature. The devil is appealing to that fallen nature. <laughs> I like the illustration of this. Just like with a mouse and cheese, the devil knows what cheese you like. And again, cheese, sinful appetites, sinful desires, sinful things. You're saved. Oh, he's going to see. Well, we'll see if we can't get Gary doing some of these things again. And he brings that cheese around and makes it look real good. And here comes temptation. And I got to deal with the devil. I've got to say no. Do you understand? You've got to do that too. So he entices us to do evil. Secondly, he harasses you. <laughs> he studies you. Did you know the devil studies you? <laughs> He's looking for weak moments. First of all, step one, he tempts you. But say you give in to the temptation. Do you know what he does then? You dirty dog. You can't be a Christian or you wouldn't do that. Now, that's the devil talking to your mind. The devil talks to you. It's a one-two punch. He tempts you to do it, and then when you act like an idiot and do what he told you to do, then he tells you what a low life, you can't be a Christian or you wouldn't do that. That's the devil. He talks to you. He talks to you in tempting you. He talks to you in accusing you. Okay. Thirdly, torment. I agree with Derek Prince, probably the greatest reason that Christians experience torment, and they do, and I've been through it, I know exactly, through unforgiveness. Unforgiveness opens the doors for the tormentors. The tormentors are the demons. Okay. I don't have time to go through all of it, but in Matthew 18, 21 through 35, Jesus talks about how Peter says, how often should I forgive someone? And Jesus says 70 times 70, basically unlimited forgiveness. But then Jesus teaches a, a parable about someone who'd been forgiven a great debt and yet refused to forget someone else talking about you and I. Here's how Jesus ends it. Verse 33, shouldst thou not also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Here's the moral of the parable. I love it when Jesus interprets what he said. So likewise shall my heavenly father do unto you that's the born-again believer. If you from your hearts, which means you really mean it, right? Forgive not everyone his brother his trespasses. Jesus says, I have forgiven you all, and I expect you to forgive everyone. You don't do that. Satan has a legal right. He has a place to you, and you will be tormented. Okay. Until you repent and take away his legal right and cast that sucker out. 
What are some of the examples of physical torment, what the devil does? Number one, arthritis. Arthritis is of the devil. <laughs> Mental torment, the spirit of fear. In fact, God even tells us, 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. There is a spirit of fear. In fact, the wicked people that created the, the virus and the vaccinations were playing on fear. Fear gets you to do things you wouldn't otherwise get to do. But remember what God says, 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And see, that's how in these last days the WNF, the globusts, are going to try to kill you and get their one world government is to create more chaos, sickness, disease, pain, you name it, get you into fear, and then they bring forth their answer, and that answer is to bring you into bondage and take away all your freedoms. No, we're not going to deal with all that today. Okay. There's spiritual torment. The devil tells you that you've, you've committed the unpardonable sin, and you believe it. He's a liar, but he tries to do that. Number four, he compels, compulsive. Uh, some things that compulsive the devil gets you to do, smoking, overeating, alcohol, talking. Satan tries to make you to do things that some of them are even okay, but it becomes compulsive. It becomes demonic. There's no rest in it. That's the devil. He also enslaves. He, he puts in you intense desires to do things you know you shouldn't do. He drives you to do it even though you may hate it. Remember, when you have a compulsion to do something that you really don't want to do and you know you shouldn't do, that's the devil, okay? Now let's put compel and enslave together. You have the word addictions, Addiction grows on frustrations. You're frustrated in your life. And therefore, you run to something, but you don't run to Jesus. Whatever you run to when you get frustrated is the thing the devil's going to use to try to get you into addiction. Also, defile. He makes you feel dirty and unclean. He puts suggestions in your mind. <laughs> you know, sometimes I've had imagination, I think, E gats. Gary, how can you be thinking that? Imagine, well, that's not me. I didn't want that. That's the devil. The devil speaks to your mind too. And that's why God tells us here's the answer bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 3 through 5. All thoughts are not yours or God's. Many, especially if they're wrong and evil, that's the devil. And then he deceives you. Pride opens the door for deception. I guess we're going to have to have a part two on this message. I'm just showing you some ways how the devil is messing with you, and you have the authority to take care of him, whether it's to resist or cast out, and you have to repent if you open the door. Are you saved? If not, pray with me right now. Dear God, I see it. I believe and understand that Jesus Christ died for my sins and rose again. I want to go to heaven. I want my sins forgiven. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I'm trusting you to be my Savior and Lord. I give my life to you both now and forever. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the broadcast of Exceedingly Abundant Ministries in cooperation with Bethel Worship Center of Joplin, Missouri. Bethel Worship Center is located at 3125 West 20th Street in Joplin. Weekly service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and a Wednesday evening Bible study at 6.30 p.m. For more information, visit their website at BethelJoplin.org or send an email to Pastor Gary. His email is GaryCulp at Yahoo.com. Please join them again next week as they continue to expound on God's truth in a relevant and practical way.